Using the population density variable we created in a previous video, we can now make a heat map comparing population density in Boston neighborhoods. I'm going to go through two ways of doing this. The first method involves installing two packages, ClassInt and RColorBrewer. ClassInt is a package for creating intervals and RColorBrewer is a package for color schemes. So once we run these two, um, we can use them. So first, uh, we're going to select the colors we want in the map. I'm going to use the function brewer.pal from the R color brewer package to select five shades from the blue color packet. And if you look up R color brewer, you can find a lot of color palettes. Um, so if we run this and we call colors, um, it'll just return a vector of five hex codes from the blue color palette. So next we want to create breaks in the population density variable so that the colors are evenly distributed. And then now we're ready to plot the heat map. So to plot the colors, um, we're gonna use this find interval function which is basically going to assign the colors to intervals of the population density. And then we can just add a title and a legend. So if we run these three lines of code, we'll get a nice heat map and you can see the neighborhoods with high population density and low population density. Okay, so Another method uh, you can try to create a heat map doesn't involve installing any packages. Uh, we can just create a new color variable, and we're just going to call this calls, um, and assign a color to each population density interval. So I just chose these colors randomly. I just looked up some colors in R. Um, but if you really wanted some nice colors from a palette, then you could also use these um, hex codes that we got from the blue color palette and just paste them into these five spots. So once we run these, um, we can plot and just specify that call equals the, um, the Boston colors uh, variable. And then we can just add title and a legend and then run this. And then you can see that this is another way to create a heat map. And then finally, we can combine everything into one map. So I'm going to add the Starbucks points and the labels. So if we just plot everything together, and remember we need to plot the base map first before we add the points. So you can see the points of the Starbucks and the labels of all the Boston neighborhoods.